Total mass and energy of the entire observable universe. Yeah, that can't be good for the universe. Time for some more XKCD. Specifically, what if the entire moon were made of electrons? And presumably the Earth made of protons. Yeah, physics is not going to survive this one. Those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't mention everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see. This question comes from Noah, who asks, What if the Earth were made entirely of protons and wow. the moon were made entirely of electrons? So you're going to get the universe's largest uncontrolled particle accelerator failure. Think Chernobyl, but instead of graphite blocks, it's much of space being torn apart. This is by far the most destructive what-if scenario to date. <laughs> That's an understatement. Now, there's been a lot of destructive scenarios on this channel. You might imagine an electron moon orbiting a proton Earth, sort of like a gigantic hydrogen atom. Yeah, I see where they're going with this. It's a cute thought, but the scale doesn't work out. Electrons don't orbit protons like moons. They form probability clouds in quantum mechanics. Saying the moon would orbit an electron is a bit like saying an aircraft carrier would float on steam because steam and water both happen to be H2O. They're connected but very different regimes of physics. Just like inside of a nuclear reactor, neutrons don't orbit the uranium nuclei during fission. They zip around, then they get absorbed, and then they fission into fission products. It is also possible for uranium-235 to absorb a neutron and become useless uranium-236 that doesn't fission, but, I dig but ultimately scale matters. On one level, it sort of makes sense. Electrons orbit protons, and moons orbit planets. However, electron moons do not orbit proton planets. <laughs> If you put two negatively charged electrons together, they try to fly apart with a force about 20 orders of magnitude stronger than the gravity pulling them together. Hit the nail right on the head. Gravity is embarrassingly weak compared to electromagnetism. After all, you can literally lift a paper clip with just a fridge magnet. That fridge magnet just beat the gravitational pull of the Earth. So multiply that mismatch by a factor of 10 to the 20th power. Good luck building the electron moon. If you put 10 to the 53 electrons together oh to build a moon, they push each other apart with an unbelievable amount of energy. This would be like trying to jam every single fuel pellet from every reactor on Earth into one fuel rod. The repulsion wouldn't just eject them, it would rip the math apart before you even finish the calculation. The moon and Earth would have no chance to gravitationally or even electrostatically influence each other. The forces trying to blow each one apart would be far more powerful. Yep, imagine trying to hold two pieces of enriched uranium apart inside of a reactor that's going up in power, so super critical. Except here, instead of the fission re releasing a predictable 200 million electron volts, you're going to get Planck-scale nonsense energy, which makes runaway prompt criticality look tame next to this. If we ignore general relativity for a minute, all right. we'll come back to it. We can calculate that the energy from all these electrons all pushing on each other would be enough to accelerate all of them outward at nearly the speed of light. So to give you a sense of scale, in particle accelerators, electrons reach 0.999999c, that's six nines, with only giga electron volts of energy. You can get even higher than that with tera electron volts of energy with some of the larger accelerators. Talking about Planck scale per particle, it's a bit like saying your toaster is going to run hotter than the sun's core. You're in a regime where the equations are going to stop being trustworthy. But this is one of those situations where saying nearly the speed of light isn't very meaningful. The electrons in a normal particle accelerator also go nearly the speed of light, but the electrons in the exploding moon each have orders of magnitude more than the Planck energy, which is itself many orders of magnitude larger than the energies we can reach in our largest accelerators. <laughs> oh yes, and there is your red flag where our models are going to break down. So all of the assumptions that go into our fundamental views of the universe do not account for things like electron moons. <laughs> if a calculation tells me that each electron has more energy than the total world's nuclear stockpile, you should probably go ahead and check the assumptions just to make sure you didn't leave anything out, which is another reason why electron moon is crazy. In other words, Noah's question takes us pretty far outside normal physics into the- Yes. <laughs> highly theoretical realm of things like quantum gravity and string theory. Ooh, I don't know. Might even make string theory make sense.
So I contacted a string theorist, and I explained Noah's oh, scenario. Yeah. Dr. Keeler agreed that we shouldn't rely on calculations to give that much energy to each electron. And she told me, I don't trust anything with energy per particle over the Planck scale. <laughs> <laughs> well, enough to make a string theorist blush. That's, uh, all right. The most energy we've really observed is in cosmic rays, more than the LHC by circa 10 to the 6th, I think, but still not close to the Planck energy. Being a string theorist, I'm tempted to say something stringy would happen, but the truth is we just don't know. Well said, and well measured, I might say. Luckily, that's not the end of the story. Remember how we're ignoring general relativity? Well, this is one of the very, very rare situations where bringing in general relativity makes a problem easier to solve. I think that's the only time you're ever going to hear those words. Usually adding relativity is a bit like adding bureaucracy. It never simplifies. But yeah, if you're going to cram universe scale energy into moon volume and relativity takes over, Forget prompt criticality, we're talking prompt black hole excursion. This ridiculousness. There is a huge amount of potential energy in this scenario. The energy that we imagined would blast all those electrons mm -hmm. apart. That energy warps space and time just like mass does. The amount of energy in our electron moon, it turns out, is about equal to the total mass and energy of the entire observable universe. Yeah, that can't be good for the universe. <laughs> hmm. Reminds me of those old memes. The yo dog, I heard you like universe, so we put a universe inside your universe, and now you can physics while you physics, I guess. An entire observable universe with a mass energy concentrated into the space of our relatively small moon would warp spacetime so strongly that it would easily overpower even the repulsion of those 10 to the 53 electrons. Yeah. So for this sort of thing, don't even bother writing an accident report. It's no meltdown, no nuclear explosion. Your core is collapsing into an event horizon, a really big event horizon. Dr. Keeler's diagnosis? Yup, black hole. <laughs> uh, what's the minimum safe distance? Accelerating away greater than fa- <clears throat> Yeah, minimum safe distance is going to be accelerating away at speeds faster than light, so... No. I guess the minimum safe distance would just say no. The attraction of this universe mass black hole cause the rest of the universe to collapse? It's hard to say. <laughs> the answer kind of depends on what the deal with dark energy uh -huh. is, and nobody knows what the deal with Something dark stringy. energy is. But for the meantime, at least, nearby galaxies would be safe, since the gravitational influence of the black hole can only expand outward at the speed of light. Okay. Kind of like the whole Higgs field vacuum decay intergalactic death sphere thing. What is, comfort what is comforting is if this sort of thing were happening, you wouldn't see it coming because it's moving faster because it's moving at the speed of light. Not sure if that makes you feel better or worse. Fortunately, this breaks so much physics. But hey, just like radiation from criticality takes time to reach you, so does gravity. After all, if the sun were to disappear, we wouldn't find out for over eight minutes. But for a while, you'd be blissfully ignorant, kind of like standing next to a reactor during one of those early day criticality experiments where it just went prompt critical but you haven't seen the flash yet and your body hasn't received it yet. Most of the universe around us would remain blissfully unaware of our ridiculous electron experiment until they suddenly... Yep. Thankfully, electrons are not moons, protons are not planets, and quantum mechanics is not orbital mechanics. And packing 10 to the 53 power charges together is physically impossible without space-time itself intervening in some weird, unprecedented way. And this is not a scenario you train for at the nuclear plant. This would be a bit like saying, instead of preparing for a loss of coolant accident, what if all of the nuclear fuel rods spontaneously decided to turn into black holes? That would make more sense than this scenario. And after all, you don't f you're not going to file an event report after this you're going to file a new branch of physics. Thanks so much for the recommendation, and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.